a dreaded subject somewhat, unless you saved and you know the answer already? Cancer. Cancer. Dread, dreadful, terrible disease, and it has taken more lives than any plague I've ever heard of. It has taken more lives than anything I've ever known about. Just taken lives, just spread through. And the thing about cancer, I heard them say this, because I don't really, really know. I've only known one person with cancer, and it spread through so quick and took their lives so quick that you don't really get to know a lot about what they were really going through. But I am told that if you catch it in time, yes. that if you see things, because it doesn't hurt, they say there's no pain with cancer at first. And you know, the devil, he comes to steal, kill, and destroy. Yes. So once he gets his foot in the door, it can start off real little, and then it just spreads wildly through the body. And it can snatch your life up in little or no time. I want to read to you. Cancer, any evil condition or thing that spreads destructively. And you know, you've seen or you've heard how fast people die when they have cancer and how they suffer so bad at the end. And it's not caught in time for them to do anything. So I just wanted to talk to you. I'm going to make this, I want to bring that to you in a natural sense because cancer can spread throughout the church. Yeah. And I'm not speaking about the physical disease of cancer, but I'm speaking about the cancer that's in your heart, the cancer that's in your mind, the cancer that's in your spirit. Glory to God. I want you to turn with me to 2 Peter. In the fifth verse, and besides this, no, I'm going to start at the fourth verse. Okay. Whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises, that by these you might be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. Aren't you glad you saved? Yes. Not in the world with all the lust and the wickedness that's going on outside. Yes. And I say outside because we're in the world, but we're not of the world. And I'm so glad we're not in the world of wickedness where even though it's around us, where it's so highly escalated. Yeah. Everywhere you look, sin has just abounded, just keeps going and getting greater and higher. I was telling someone yesterday how that, when I was a girl, I remember people used to smoke weed, but it was just a, a weed, and they walk away, they was okay for a while. No, well, I don't know anything about it because I never smoked it, but I, I knew people that did. But today, they're not satisfied with just smoking it. They eat it. Did you know that they eat it? They have it in cookies and mushrooms and whatever, or just wild and foolishness. And now it's legal. So people can't, you know, when, if it's something that's forbidden, you can't do as much of it. Right. 
if there's a law that forbids you and you've got to sneak, you can't sneak as much as you can if it's just open and free. So I guess they really don't care, you know, how sin just escalates so hard. There was a time the homosexuals were in the closet, so to speak. And now, just break out the closet, let everybody know who we are, what we do. Glory to God. And beside this, we are given these promises, and beside this, given, giving all diligence, add to your faith virtue, yes. and to virtue, knowledge, yes. and to knowledge, temperance. Yes. You know, just think about that for a moment. You can have knowledge, but, and whatever it is that you've learned in this area of knowledge, you got to have enough knowledge to know when to do it and how to use it. So it calls for temperance, or you can get carried away. And to temperance, patience. And to patience, godliness. And to godliness, brotherly kindness. And to brotherly kindness, charity. For if these things be in you and abound, they make you that you shall neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. But he that lacketh these things is blind. Nobody wants to be blind. And cannot see afar off and hath forgotten that he was purged from his old sins. So then if you're not growing, you're regressing, right? You must grow in the Lord. You must know. You must be adding these things on or you'll be regressing. Wherefore the rather, brethren, give diligence to make your calling and election sure. For if you do these things, you shall never fail. Wouldn't that be wonderful if you never failed? Now, I'm speaking about cancer. Now, I'm going to talk about the spiritual cancer. Spiritual cancer, uh, something that is spreading wildly, quickly, because it is not detected when it was small taken care of, gotten rid of, and now it's spreading quickly throughout the church. We don't want that. We don't want cancer. We don't want it naturally or spiritually. But at least if we had it naturally, we have a chance to go to heaven. You get it spiritually, you out. Hallelujah. That's where you get that death, that separation from God. That's the worst death you can go through. Hallelujah. No one wants to be separated from God. Hallelujah. If you know anything about him, you don't want to be separated from the little you know. And the things that you find out after you get saved, you don't want to give those up. You just want to keep adding on so you become more fruitful, more progressive, more successful. Hallelujah. So that you can be healed. Glory to God. And that's why it's so important that when we see someone, and the pastor touched on this when he was up here, testifying because of your love that you have for one another and you see someone going out of the way you just kind of bring him back yes. hallelujah if you detect it he should detect it he would have detected it if he did a self-examination 
if he had made his calling and his election sure. Hallelujah. Because every day you got to check yourself. And every time you hear the word, you got to listen for the things that concern you. Hallelujah. You know your weaknesses. So when you hear them and you are reminded, you got to keep checking yourself, making sure, hallelujah, that you are wide awake, that you're not blind, hallelujah, to the things that's going on in your life, to the way that you're thinking, to the way that you're treating people. Isn't that right? You want to be aware, hallelujah, of the things that's going on inside of you. Did you know that you can take a little tiny thing and it'll start off real tiny? People that are sensitive and they're easily provoked or they're easily uh, offended. Well, they said something to me and, and that hurt my feelings. And why are your feelings out there? Which is self, yes. self. Yes. You know, you're thinking about yourself all the time. Public enemy number one, yes. especially in God's sight, yes. especially in the church of God. Yes. No one should be quickly offended. Amen. Then you get offended, you don't forget, you won't forget it because you're gonna tell different ones about it and you start spreading it the next thing you know, it's all through the, through the church. And everybody's got a grudge. All your friends not speaking to this one because you don't like them. You're spreading cancers. Yeah. Glory to God. Where is that brotherly love? Isn't that what he said? Yeah. In the seventh verse, to your godliness, brotherly kindness. You have got to be kind to people. You can't just talk to people any kind of way. You cannot talk down to them like you're the boss and you know it all. Glory to God. Then when you offend someone and they go out and they tell their friends, and you know they're going to tell the ones that they know like them, that's in their little group, and then it's going to spread, and the next thing you know, cancer is just running wild. It's growing. It's being destructive. It's causing people to not have that brotherly love that they should have. But he that lacketh these things is blind. If you lack checking yourself, that's why when you know every time the word comes and your little finger go up and you, excuse me, you got to always leave. I'm not talking about in cases of emergency. I'm talking about people that train themselves to walk. If you could, a lot of people, if they could, they'd be playing with the Facebook while the word is going on. Or they might be playing uh, Cherry Blossom and Saga and uh, those games. Oh my God. But Cherry Blossom Saga cannot save you. The word of God can save you. Hallelujah. It will keep you in mind of who you are. Yes. Hallelujah. So when you hear the word of God, pay very close attention. Yes. When I hear it, I'm on the edge of my seat, and I've done this for so many years, it's hard for me not to sit on the edge of my seat. Yes. And I'm looking and listening yes. because I want to know. I don't want to be guilty. Yes. Glory to God. Because if your heart condemns you, God is greater than your heart. Glory to God. 
get Ezekiel. We don't want cancer, do we? So be careful. One little offense can cause cancer. One, just one, just one can cause cancer. Hallelujah. We can't use cancer up in here. And the devil is just waiting. Sometimes you weren't even offended about something and then somebody will hunt you and say, did you hear what they said? Girl, they was laughing at you. And then you fall all in. Let's help spread the cancer. Oh my God. You think cancer spreaders are gonna be in heaven? No. You think they're gonna be up there spreading cancer? No. Uh, no way. In the seventh in the um, third chapter, I'm gonna start reading at the 17th verse. Son of man. I have made thee a watchman unto the house of Israel. Therefore hear the word at my mouth and give them warning from me. When I say unto the wicked, thou shalt surely die, and thou givest him not the warning, and I want you to pay attention to this, very important right in here. If the Lord says, your brother or sister shall surely die, and you don't warn them, you'd be like, well, shoot. I'm going to just make sure I don't die. And you givest not him warning, nor speakest to warn the wicked from his wicked way to save his life. Are you lifesavers? Yes. Are you lifesavers? Yes. None other but the Spirit of God otherwise known as the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Because when we preach the word of God, the true anointing of God takes over. And what you should see is fire. Hallelujah. God has moved in your life. He has healed. He has fixed. He has brought you out. He has delivered you. He has opened up ways for you. He has done things only a God can do. He has transformed our lives. He has made us new, new cars, new homes new blessings, new mindset, hallelujah. A mind to do his will and not your own. These people that have their thumb on my neck and I just, I, I can't find room to breathe. I can't get up and I can't help myself. And Lord, I need you and so you cry out to him. Hallelujah. Righteous. nor speakest to warn the wicked from his wicked way, to save his life. The same wicked man shall die in his iniquity, but his blood will I require at thine hand. So whoever said no, better start warning the wicked. So that when these people die, of this cancer or of anything, whatever it is, if the Lord says do it, you go to them and do it, it will save their life. Yes. You don't want to be like Jonah and don't want to go warn the people and got swallowed up by a whale. Yes. My goodness. Yet if thou warn the wicked, 
and he turned not from his wickedness, nor from his wicked way, he shall die in his iniquity. But thou hast delivered thy soul. So that tells me that if he's requiring their blood at your hands, then your soul is lost. Isn't that what it said? Thou hast delivered thy soul. So something took your soul. It was that disobedience. Not to warn the wicked. Not to catch that cancer when it was really little where God could just easily just, you know, after it gets so big, it starts fighting back. Glory to God. And take a lot of people's lives. Again, when a righteous man doth turn from his righteousness and commit iniquity, and I lay a stumbling block before him, he shall die. Because thou hast not given him warning. He shall die in his sin, and his righteousness, which he hath done, shall not be remembered. But his blood will I require at thine hand. Oh my goodness. I hope to God that I, nobody's blood is required at my hand. And I doubt it because I got a big mouth. I don't mind telling people. <laughs> and sometimes I know that they're going to be mad at me. I said, well, they'll be mad for a minute, but they'll get over it. If they don't get over it and they die, it won't be at my hand because I opened my mouth and I warned the wicked. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Nevertheless, if I warn the righteous man that the righteous sin not, and he doth not sin, he shall surely live, because he is warned. Also, thou hast delivered thy soul. Yeah. Hallelujah. So righteous people, try to help people be righteous along with you. You know, I, I can't see for the life of me how it is that you can have friends and have friends for years and nobody ever, ever follows you to church. Nobody ever gets saved. Are you warning the wicked? Or are you out there saying, well... They might be homosexual, but God love them. So you just going to leave them to die? God does love them, and you should love them, and that's why you should warn them yes. about the wicked ways. Yes. And this is not just homosexuality. That's not the, the only sin. There are sins, there are people sinning all around you. But don't you partake of their wickedness by not warning them, by not, when you detect that cancer and you see, what do they say? That the world got another way of saying it, nip it in the bud. And you don't nip it in the bud. And you just let it grow, grow like a wildfire all through the church. Oh, my God. Then you got saints coming up with cancer all oh, everywhere. Glory to God. That would not be a good thing to do. But where's your answer at? Did I read you the answer first? You do remember me reading the answer first. It was Second Peter, the first chapter, the fifth verse. And where you are adding on, where you are adding on, where till it, in the end you have charity, which is perfect love. Perfect love. Hallelujah. It, that perfect love works every time. 
when you love somebody so perfectly that you can just reach out, oh, my sister, you can't do that, honey. God doesn't like that. Oh, honey, you know, and you're trying to deal with them, and if you deal with them and you warn them, don't just leave them for the devil. Take a witness and go back and warn them again. It's just like your children. That's what you would do for your child, isn't that right? If your child was going the wrong way and say he was getting ready to get hit by a car or something, you'd reach out and grab them. And if they fought you and didn't want to come back, you'd get some, somebody come help me get him. But you'd make sure that your child didn't get hit. Make sure that no cancer spreads throughout this church. Amen. Amen. None other but the Spirit of God, otherwise known as the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Because when we preach the Word of God, the true anointing of God takes over. And what you should see is fire. Hallelujah. God has moved in your life. He has healed. He has fixed. He has brought you out. He has delivered you. He has opened up ways for you. He has done things only a God can do. He has transformed our lives. He has made us new. New cars, new homes, new blessings, new mindset. Hallelujah. A mind to do his will and not your own. These people that have their thumb on my neck and I just... I, I can't find room to breathe. I can't get up and I can't help myself. And Lord, I need you. And so you cry out to him. Hallelujah. Ooh, righteous.